Hello again. Welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. I'm Eric Solgoy, editor of Crop Life and Crop Life Iron Magazines. Here today with Laura Sawinski. We're both in our respective homes and offices. Laura, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Yeah. So, hey, I guess, I, you know, I guess this goes under the heading of, you know, uh, things happen for a reason. I know, <laughs> well, and, and and again, I'm not qualifying to be a good or bad. I'm just saying, I know when we were out at the ARA meeting, which we talked about a few weeks ago, um, and we had a roundtable discussion, water and water issues mm-hmm. in California came up when we were having our discussion. And lo and behold, I guess uh, California and water just made the news as we were getting ready to record this video. I uh, ran across an item that said the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California has formally declared a regional drought emergency, and they are calling on water agencies in the state to immediately reduce their use of all imported supplies. And I guess this decision affects like over 7 million people right now, but you might know a little bit more about this. You were kind of living through some of this stuff when you spent time in California, so what can you share with our viewers regarding the situation? Well, I am still a subscriber and supporter to the LA Times. So uh, I saw this story yesterday when it popped up and um, big news for sure. Early, earlier this year, um, the Metropolitan Water District imposed, um, you know, told the Northern Cal. California water agencies to immediately start to conserve water. The Colorado River was not part of that um, that mandate. Um, so right now, as you mentioned, uh, the news this week was that MWD came out and said immediately start to reduce and conserve. Um, by April, uh, Metropolitan Water District will consider allocating supplies to all 26 of its member agencies. And that would affect um, statewide top to bottom 19 million people. Um, So the wild card right now really is the Colorado, which, you know, we've all seen the photos of uh, Lake Mead, Lake Powell, you know, boats and carcasses and skeletons and (laughs) World War II coins and all that stuff that have now come about. But yeah, no, this is really, really big, big news. I mean, we had a, a sizable storm this past week, but gee, we have a long ways to go. Yeah, I know the one. The I think I think I must have been reading the same articles as they're talking about mm-hmm. the fact that the Colorado River has fallen to such historic lows that Lake Mead and Lake Powell could reach "quote unquote" dead pool status very shortly. Right. Which, and right. you know, for those who are not fans of Marvel movie uh, comic book character, uh, you know films uh deadpool status in this case is talking about the fact that the water level in those um two lakes would be so low that it would no longer pass downstream from the dams right. Right. um so you know that's again this is a very serious situation i know the folks we talked to when we were out there were very worried about it and um it, it, and I know, yeah, like you said, I know it's been raining quite a bit recently in California, mm-hmm. but, mm-hmm. you know, you you can't replace uh, three years, four years worth of drought conditions with one good storm event. So, um, right. you know, obviously something we'll have to keep following because, again, as this moves into uh, the spring season, I'm sure it's going to cause a lot of headaches for a lot of the growers and egg retailers that service them in California and other places out west. So. Right, right. Just on a side note, my personal opinion is that they should have taken that extra step and imposed mandatory, uh, you know, things right now. The, the reason being is that in prior years, having, you know, lived there when things got really dire, um, people exceeded what the everyone thought they you know let's cut back here and imposed you know you can only water on certain days etc people really took it ser- seriously and you know stepped up to the plate i think rather than waiting till s- spring <clears throat> at least again on the uh, consumer side i i think um people would you know really respond to that i think there's absolutely an, an awareness and 
Um, you know, we all know that Californians in general tend to be, you know, more con conservation, envir environmental. So from that angle, they're willing participants to, you know, try and do their part. So, um, but for the farmers, boy, I, I just, it's, it's so tough. It's so tough. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, we'll be obviously following this. Uh, this is probably an issue we're going to be talking about for a couple of months at least. So right. we will, uh, you know, for you viewers out there want more information, uh, I'd say stay tuned because we probably will have more to share. So one other thing to go over, of course, I know we've been talking about last couple of videos, the fact that there was a potential rail strike here in the U.S., which was averted because of government action, um, you know, uh, government stepping in and basically saying, no, the strike's not going to happen. But apparently our friends over in the United Kingdom aren't as fortunate or don't have power for their government to intervene because I was reading there is a rail strike right now over in the U.K. and that rail service is running only at about 20 percent so again it sounds mm -hmm. like a very mm -hmm. nasty situation <laughs> for our friends in the united kingdom regarding trying to move people around and of course goods also important yeah you know that it really is i think it's a big bigger story when you look at the context of what's happened in the uk since brexit became official if you will and just today um Barclays uh, Bank said British manufacturers are sitting on about 29 billion in unfinished goods because of persistent supply chain shortages. Um, I know that there's been similar uh, union uh, activity at the ports, um, shutting down the port of Liverpool, et cetera. Um, so this tra transport thing just adds to what's really already uh, tight and while the UK has repeatedly kind of begged the US for a bilateral trade agreement, uh, neither the Trump, administ Trump administration or Biden um, thus far has been agreeable to um, sit down and hammer something out. And I think if this, I, I had to reread the headline twice when I first saw this, because this was um, a while ago, but the UK has now taken to putting in place uh, MOUs, memorandums of understanding with individual states as a, well, if we can't get the whole US, we're, we're going after. So thus far, um, North Carolina, Indiana, and just this past few weeks, South Carolina has signed these MOUs with the UK for trade and investment. Um, Texas, California, and Utah are now in line to do something sim similar. So. Um, really, you know, really tough in the, in the UK. I mean, if you're looking at the currency or trade, uh, trade deals, it's, um, it's been tough since Brexit. So, um, I think our friend Peter Zion is, <laughs> uh, better versed to comment on what that whole Brexit thing, um, you know, good or bad. And I think he may have alluded to that during the ARA yeah, conference. I, I, he was I don't know. I don't remember that specifically, but I do remember in talking about the UK and the US talking about some type of a, a, a trade agreement that was, you know, apparently still on the table, like you said, from the Trump administration, and it hasn't changed substantially. So, uh, right. but yeah, nobody has signed anything at this point. So it's interesting that they're right. going to individual states. So again, yeah. this is another situation we'll have to follow because unfortunately, these things mm -hmm. usually cause domino effects. I mean, when when somebody like the United Kingdom gets affected by things like this, like you say, sitting on all that unfinished good amount, um, you know, eventually there'll be some there'll be some trickle down effect to probably Absolutely. here where we live in the United States, and it will impact us. So again, viewers, stay tuned. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, one thing, Laura, we have not talked about is this actually went down at the end of November, but we've been so busy on the road and talking about other things we've done that sort of let it slip through the cracks, but we do certainly want to acknowledge it. And that was, of course, our friends at Corteva has now acquired Stoller. Mm -hmm. um, and this deal, like I say, went down on November 30th. Uh, they've acquired them and uh, Stoller has operations in 60 countries and forecast revenue in 2022 of 400 million 
And the primary reason for this acquisition, of course, was the biological component that is a part of mm-hmm. Solar's business operations. Now, Chuck Margo, uh, or Mago, I'm sorry, chief executive at Corteva uh, had this quote regarding the acquisition. He said, biologicals provide farmers with sustainable advantage tools that complement crop protection technologies and collectively can work to address global challenges around food security and climate change. So again, adding this Stoller biological department uh, to the existing Corteva biologicals uh, division, I'm sure will help the company in the long run to stand out in this field. Yeah, for sure. You're right. Um, Big news that uh, really has sizable impacts across the industry and could be a precursor of even more things in a similar vein as far as M&A activity. So, yeah. Yeah. And it is amazing to me that this year, particularly in the tail end of the 2022, that there were a lot of activity, lots of activity, and like you say, acquisitions, expansions, mm-hmm. setting up, uh, you know, self divisions for biologicals by a lot of the major traditional crop protection folks that we know, the Cortevas, the FMCs, the the Syngentas mm-hmm. of the world. So, I would, uh, I know we'll be doing our update in that category uh, coming up here in the first quarter of 2023. So it'll be real interesting to see how things. I mean, they're they're changing rapidly. So how how much will have changed in just the course of twelve months? So so True. again, viewers, as I've been saying, stay tuned. If you're doing the drinking <laughs> game this week, stay tuned. We have time to do the uh, do the shot or the beer since the holiday season. So all right, well, Laura, time for your favorite segment. See how you do this week. Time for fun with numbers. Oh boy. Well, okay. I tried to re- read up everything I can get my hands on. So <laughs> Okay. Well, I will I will kind of I will kind of <laughs> toss you a clue and just I will say don't be fooled by my mm. options. Okay. Mm. All righty. Hopefully that'll improve your eyes. <laughs> so your number this week is uh two hundred and twenty thousand two two zero comma zero zero zero. 220,000. So is 220,000 A the number of UK real rail workers currently on strike? Is it B the pledged water reduction usage in gallons some California, California agencies are now striving for? Is it C the number of hydrogen engine vehicles that will be sold in the US by the year 2035? Or is it D, the number of packing peanuts I've received in Christmas shipments <laughs> this year so far? <laughs> you know, I really have to hand it to you. <laughs> I play this game just to hear what you're going to say for that, <laughs> that last throwaway. <laughs> I suspect there's a lot of people out there who wait oh, just to hear what the D option is. So hopefully they enjoy it. So. Yeah. Well, I. I I'm going to go with C, the hydrogen vehicles. Very, very good. Uh, Yes, yes. I was trying to fool you by bringing up two things we talked about and one (laughs) thing we didn't. So, yes, I was kind of trying to clue you in that, okay, the one thing we didn't touch on is what the answer is. Yes, you are absolutely correct. This came from an item I found. It was a study done by a group called Interact Analysis. And uh, they're estimating that yeah. hydrogen internal combustion engine vehicles, H2 ICEs, uh, will be at 220,000 units by 2035. Mm-hmm. And of course, the reason that's relevant, what they said is that we're going to see most of the uh, activity in this area will happen with trucks and off-road, uh, off-road machines, such as loaders and agricultural equipment. So oh, that's our great, market, right? yeah, our marketplace will be uh, you know twelve years from now. Our marketplace will be one of the spearheads for the hydrogen engine movement going on in the United States. <clears throat> wow, well, I see a future topic for our vision conference with that. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, you should because I know when I yeah. talked uh, when I talked to the folks at Fent Echo 
back in July. I know they're working on hydrogen fuel cells for their tractors, mm -hmm. which they're hoping to launch into the marketplace in the next, I think, five years or so. But, you know, of yeah. course, after that, sprayers, spreaders, tenders, other vehicles that our ag retailers use, I'm sure we'll be employing those technologies as well. So yep. definitely something we need to keep an eye on going forward as we look at ag tech with our events. Yeah, that's great. That's a good one. All right. I'm glad you enjoyed that. So, folks, next week will be, of course, um, since it's uh, the video will be actually airing on Christmas Eve, we'll be rerunning our special the video before Christmas segment, which I know you folks have enjoyed the last few years. And then Laura and I will be back uh, the following week to kind of wrap up our favorite biggest news items from calendar year 2022 and look a little ahead to 2023. Sounds good. All right. Well, Laura, I hope uh, since this is the last time we'll have you on, I hope you have a great holiday, good Christmas with your family and loved ones. And to you, our viewers, of course, you do as well. I'm Eric Sulagoy on behalf of myself, Laura Sawinski, and everyone here at Crop Life. We'll talk to you real soon. If you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, contact us by email or Twitter or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. We will try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.